Hello, my name is Duncan and welcome to Back Away From Donkey and Bath Books. It's a beautifully sunny Thursday morning out there, or Thursday, we just hit the afternoon. Uh, I've been out of action for a couple of days due to bad migraine. And so my original planned videos that involved a little more work than this one uh, haven't happened. But I wanted to do this one because I found it quite interesting. There's been a few videos recently on people talking about the price of books. If you saw my community tab a few months ago, I mentioned... Don't buy, I do not buy many brand new books. Uh, a Harry Turtle Dove book that's due to be released in paperback, I think, in August. And the retail price for it is about £13, which is ridiculous money. So I'm of an age that I remember when book prices were, were fixed as part of the netbook agreement. I have this book here, Piers Anthony's Split Infinity. I brought this early 80s on the back. You can zoom in at the price. It cost me £2.95 because it's United Kingdom, £2.95. Gene Wolfe's Devil in the Forest with a wonderful Bruce Pennington artwork on the front. £1.95. I brought that early 80s. So, netbook agreement. Was it a price fixing cartel or? Was it something that helped the consumer and the booksellers? We shall see, or you will see my opinion. So I've got some note cards because I don't want to do any lots of editing in this video. And also I hate jump cuts. Uh, jump cuts are the work of the devil. And I don't think any video looks good with jump cuts because it just makes people look like they're having a seizure. And they're one of my biggest bugbears on YouTube. <laughs> Anyway, so if I refer to these note cards, it's because it's got dates and a couple of names that I won't remember very easily, especially post-migraine anyway. And actually post-migraine, if I look rougher than normal, <laughs> you can have to live with it. So netbook agreement, it was, came in place in 1899 was discussions and 1900 it came in place. And it was between the, an agreement between the retailers, re, retailers and the publishers. And the idea was they would fix the price of the books and basically people had to sell at those prices if as a book retailer you didn't the publishers would refuse to supply you sounds quite grim but the whole idea of it was it was meant to help small booksellers uh help uh authors because they would get paid correctly and basically encourage books so not people undercutting people uh, later on they brought in a thing that you could discount uh, educational books for schools and colleges. So yes, so this agreement happily went on till 1965. Uh, let me just check my dates here. Uh, sorry, 1905 was the bit when the education king came in and yeah, 1962 it was examined. So 60 years later, examined by the Restricted Practice Practices uh, Board Policy. And they said, nope, it's fine, you can carry on. So I said, when I was growing up, books were fixed prices. We knew what the books prices were. So then we fast forward through to the early 90s. And the early 90s was, if you remember the 80s and 90s, it was everything's free market, everything's free market. But Dylan's the booksellers in the UK. And find the name of the guy. Uh... The head of Dylan's was uh, a guy called Terry Mayer. And he was like a free market guy, totally over the top, obsessed with it. And he made it his job to beat the netbook agreement. He wanted to be able to discount books. And with him and a few other people getting on, like big companies like Waterstones got onto it, basically in 1995, the netbook agreement uh, finished. I remember when it finished. And we were promised our oh, book prices will drop down. Uh, it'll be better for everybody. And what happened is you get supermarkets and that was then started to sell books. And they discounted everything. What generally happened, though, was that the book. Sorry, the book prices went down, but only on. A certain amount of books uh, on like the so-called if you look in now it'd be on the so-called celebrity books those are the ones that all 
get discounted. And I'm talking physical books here. I'll mention um, e-books in a minute. But physical books, it only seems to be the celebrity books that have got discounted. And the thing the netbook agreement did, because everybody sent the same prices, it supported independent bookshops. And between 1995 and 2010, over 500 independent bookshops in the UK disappeared. Wasn't all due to netbook agreement because ebooks had a thing to do with it and online sales had something to do with it, but it did not help. The netbook agreement also made sure that publishers would take risks with uh, books and authors because they would be able to, they would be earning enough to be able to pay people enough money. And one thing I hear a lot about, uh, you read around, is that authors not getting paid enough or unless you're somebody like Brandon Sanderson who can basically write his own ticket uh, the smaller authors and less known things aren't getting paid enough and we hear that a lot and especially via ebooks as well but that's what the whole goal of the netbook agreement and in my opinion as somebody who's lived through the netbook agreement and now prices for the sort of books I buy a lot of the prices have gone up uh i said discount ones aren't gone down and even if you look at ebooks let's bring ebooks into the equation uh the ones that are discounted are certain ones that are sponsored by amazon and what is happening is the authors aren't getting much of those monies money uh, and i mentioned a harry turtle dove book that i was looking at that is listed for i think the paperback that's going to be released is about 13 pound and the ebook is listed for 12 and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not paying £12 for an ebook. I'm sorry, I'm not doing that for something that I will not own and that the Amazon could change the cover of at any point. So, yes, that was the netbook agreement. It, to my mind, it, the idea through the 80s and 90s was the free market can fix everything. But experience wise, it is not the panacea that everybody always thinks. Uh, there needs to be some sort of regulation uh the netbook agreement definitely in my opinion has restricted the publishing industry i do not think there's much variety in publishers as there is you're getting a lot more self-publishing but which as much as self-publishing is great you're getting less variety coming from the main publishers which is very poor independent bookshops have basically almost disappeared uh, some of that is due to online, but there's still a lot is due to the fact that the prices have been discounted and they cannot compete with big chains like um, Waterstones and places like that. Uh, what is quite interesting what is other countries had their own version of the netbook agreement. Uh, France had theirs up until 1979 and then they stopped it. And then two years later, in 1981, they put it into law and brought their fixed pricing of books back into law because they decided it was bad for the consumer and it was bad for business and it is still in place now. Germany has their own version. Argentina has their own version. Uh, a lot of European countries, Greece has got a version. Uh, Brazil has got a version. <laughs> so the netbook agreement is not all bad. And I personally, I can't see it coming back in this country, which is a real shame, but I do think for literature and for writing and for encouraging young writers it has done a bad job and my opinion on book prices is they have gone up new books i'm i don't get excited by many new books the sort of books i read yes i read a lot of science fiction and things like this uh for my opinion a lot of new science fiction and a lot of new fantasy is not particularly good and you're getting the same authors all the time People like Sarah J Maas, I'm, I've not read any of hers and it could be well written, but when you're getting that pushed and that discounted all the time, smaller writers are not coming through. And the netbook agreement enabled publishers to push the smaller authors, gave them money to be able to do this. And that's what is missing, I think, in the way books are now published. Uh, is there an answer? I don't know. But I do think that the quality of works, of more, less mainstream works, has definitely gone down. Uh, which is probably why I said I concentrate on a lot of my stuff between sort of pre-2000. Yes, I do read some newer stuff, but very, very rarely. 
But yeah, that was my brief, if not rambling, update on the netbook agreement and the pricing of books. Uh, I know some other people have done some really good videos on book pricing. Uh, MJ did. Uh, I think Book Songs Love and Magic did. I will link to some of them down below. And they've probably gone into a, their opinions a bit more detailed than me. But I just thought if you are too young or not from the UK and you don't know about the netbook agreements, that's what it, that's what it was. It was a way of, yes, it was price fixing, but it was price fixing done well in order to aid literature and enable to aid business. And in my mind, it was a sad day when it ended. And all because of Dylan's of books, shops that actually no longer exist because they went bankrupt, which isn't the end of the world. Uh, anyway, that's uh, my rambling book, rambling, rambling netbook agreement video and working on a post migraine malaise brain. And I will speak to you all very, very soon. And hopefully I'll be a bit more coherent then. Thank you very much.